Okay, we're still working through some of the minor profits. I'll give you a bit of a rundown or just a quick overview of two more minor profits. Maybe you know somebody called Joel. Anybody know somebody called Joel? You know somebody called Joel, do you? <laughs> you know somebody called Joel. These are people named their children after people in the Bible. All right, so Joel, maybe you haven't heard of somebody called Amos. Amos is one of the, another minor prophet. Book number 29, book number 30. How many books in total in the Bible? Who remembers? 40. 66. 66, that's it. So we're almost halfway. Almost halfway. We should be halfway. I'm not doing them exactly in order. Oh, what is that? Who knows what that is? Simon. A grasshopper. Oh, close. Close. It's very similar. What do you think, Timothy? Cricket. Cricket? No, not a cricket. Similar to a grasshopper, but... You know what they're called? What does the Bible call them? These things. Try again. A praying mantis? No, not a praying. Praying mantis has big arms like this. No, <laughs> a praying mantis. This is a locust. Locust. Similar to a grasshopper, isn't it? But, you know, locusts, they can do really big damage, you know, when a swarm of locusts come in, eat all the crop, eat all your wheat, eat all sorts of things. So, you know, in Joel, which is this book, what has he got here? Why have they drawn the picture of Joel like this, with all these locusts? Because what God did in the days of Joel, Joel was preaching to the kingdom of Judah, right? So that was the... On the top of my head is the southern kingdom, I believe. Southern kingdom of Judah. So that's where Joel is preaching. And in the time when Joel was preaching, you know what God did to teach the children of Israel a lesson? He sent a swarm of locusts to devour the land. Because what the book of Joel is about is about Jesus coming. There's some in there about his first coming when Jesus came to die for us. But there's a lot also about his second coming that hasn't happened yet when Jesus will come back and people will be punished for not believing on God. Right, so this is what he's got here. See how he's got the locusts? They're swarming the land. They're devouring everything. And you know what God is saying? Well, these locusts that are coming in the days of Judah when Jesus comes back again, they're going to be like nothing. They're going to be like flies compared to when God pours out his wrath when Jesus comes back. Because you know, in Revelation, we are told about an even scarier locust. And we're given a picture of them. I'm about to show you a scary picture. You guys ready? Ready for the scary picture? <gasps> this is somebody's drawing of what the locusts in Revelation look like. They got hair, hair like women and teeth like lion. And they like, sound like horses and not only that, but they got a big sting like a scorpion. And God is saying, you know these locusts, this is a big picture, look how small it is in Joel's hand here. He says these locusts come and are going to devour the land. He's saying they're going to be like flies when Jesus comes back and he pours out his wrath and he lets these creatures out of the bottomless pit. But you know, we don't have to worry. There are scary things in this world, but we don't have to worry because why? If we put our faith on Jesus. Simon, what, do you want to say something? Mommy told me about this monster. Did you? You learned about it. Yeah, they're scary, hey. But you know what? We don't have to be scared. We don't have to worry because these are not for people that believe on Jesus. These are for the people that reject God, hate God, don't want anything to do with God. But if we put our faith on Jesus, we're going to be spared. I'll tell you. Yeah. Well, this is just somebody's drawing of it. So we don't know exactly what they look like, but we, do, we are given a bit of a description in Revelation. So if you go and read, when you go home and read your Bible, or you read Revelation 9, you'll read about these creatures. But you don't need to be scared. Why? Because if we believe on Jesus, we're going to be spared judgment. That's the lesson in Joel. God is sending his judgment for our sins, but if we turn to him and believe on the Lord, we will be saved. Look at what it says in Joel chapter 2, 32. And it shall come to pass that whosoever 
shall call on the name of the Lord shall be delivered. What does delivered mean? You're going to be saved from that punishment. That's why we need to put our faith on Jesus and to make sure we believe on him. And then we can be spared from the punishment we deserve, right, which is hell. So let's read this together. You ready? Joel chapter 2, verse 32a. And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be delivered. Now Amos was a shepherd. Now his, his message was similar. Not as scary as Joel's, but his message was similar that Israel, so he's now preaching to the other kingdom. So you have the southern kingdom of Judah, you have the northern kingdom of Israel. <coughs> he's now preaching to the other kingdom, to Israel, but he's preaching a similar message. You have sinned against God. And God is going to bring judgment. But if you believe on him, then you can be saved. So even though Amos preached about the coming judgment of Israel, them going into captivity, and, but he said, hey, if you turn back to God and believe on him, you can be saved. So remember, they went back eventually into the promised land, the people of Israel, but it's a picture of one day us as believers going to heaven. And that's why it says in Amos chapter 9, verse 14, it says, And I will bring again the captivity of my people of Israel, and they shall build the waste cities and inhabit them, and they shall plant vineyards and drink the wine thereof. They shall also make gardens and eat the fruit of them. So even though God did a picture of wasting the land, the message was, hey, but if you believe on Jesus, it's gonna, you're going to be able to come back. And that's the spiritual picture. The spiritual picture is we deserve hell. We don't deserve to go to this land. But because Jesus died for us, we believe on him, we can be brought back spiritually into the land of God, which is going to be heaven. Isn't that a great story? Isn't that a great message? <laughs> so that's the story. That's why we look through the books of the Old Testament. Who is it always pointing us to? Sarah. Who is it always pointing us to? Jesus. Jesus. That's right. That's why we are always being pointed back to Jesus, reminded, hey, we're sinners. What is a sin? We've done wrong, haven't we? We've committed our sin against God. We've committed many sins against God. We deserve hell. But if we believe on Jesus Christ, we will be spared from that punishment. We will be delivered when we call upon his name. <laughs>